Like many gamers, there have been numerous times where I've read a description of a game in previews, and then when I've played the final game, I wondered how just the developers could have got it so right on paper to then producing a finished game that feels as far away from that as possible. This was sadly often the case when it came to N64 fighting games. As we all know by now, many tried and failed to produce a stellar fighting game on the console. For every Smash Brothers or Killer Instinct Gold, we got games such as this, Deadly Arts as it was known in North America, but Gasp as it was known in the rest of the world. And Gasp you shall, because after a short while playing this game, you'll be wondering why they bothered to launch the title outside of Japan eight months after it first flopped there. What's even funnier is that it wasn't released in Australia until almost 20 months after its Japanese launch. No matter which region you're playing this game in, you'll be quick to realise that this game is one which offered so much but fails to deliver in almost every single area. Perhaps the first culprit was its character design. Take a classic all-time fighting game such as Street Fighter, then give it to a ROM hacker so to make some slight alterations to the game and what you're left with is pretty much the entire roster of fighters in Deadly Arts. Sure, in many fighting games you'll play certain characters and then you'll quickly realise they are the Chun-Li type character and then you'll find another one that has the Balrog type attributes and so on. Except in Deadly Arts, the characters actually look like deformed versions of their Street Fighter counterparts. After you've selected your character in what must be one of the slowest character selection screens in history, you're then right into the gameplay, where at first glance things appear to be better. Sure, the graphics are not great, but after what you will have seen so far, it looks passable as an average looking fighting game. Then the fights begin and things go from average to poor. Firstly, I'll start with the frame rate, which is incredibly low. Every move you make feels like your character is wading through water, and despite having such a low frame rate, even this proves to be too much for the game's engine. At numerous times in almost every match, the on-screen action gets too much and the game will slowly crumble and judder, making it almost unplayable. This is particularly noticeable when you interact with the levels, because there are various objects or walls which you can knock your opponent through, but this too is poorly executed and aside from a slight visual treat of seeing something come crashing down on your opponent, it does little to add any tactical element to the game. I really didn't care for the short time limits of each bout either. Although each round lasts 30 seconds, it feels to fly by as you move so slowly on the screen, and the actual combat you can get off in this time period is severely limited. The combat itself is also pretty basic. Whilst there are combos to pull off, these are often a chore to do so, and the unresponsive controls really don't help matters either. The entire game is easy to complete with just hammering the A and B buttons, and so there's little reward for trying to pull off additional moves and leaving your character open for a counter-attack. The game does have some plus points however. What I liked about this game most is that if you're both still standing when the timer hits zero, a points-based system is used to determine the winner of that round. Most standard fighting games would reward the round to the person with the most health, but in Deadly Arts, the person who performed the best will win, taking into account health, technique and so on. It is possible to have more health than your opponent, but still lose the round because they attempted to fight better and so they win. It's a nice twist and does keep you on your toes when the timer begins to reach the last few seconds. The game's best idea comes in its creator fighter mode. After completing your character design with some fairly solid creation tools, you'll then begin with a very basic fighter and must take on opponents with the aim of beating them and then learning their skills. This is perhaps the part of the game with the most longevity, as you'll get some fun out of trying to beat all of the opponents and ending up with your created character having one heck of a moveset for you to unleash. You can even save them to a memory card and play them against your friends. That is if you can find someone else who has endured this game for as long as you have. Surprisingly, I also really like the music, although I think it may be for the wrong reasons. When playing the game, I was purposely looking for things which I liked, and with the gameplay and visual subpar, I think that the music stands out as being half decent. The tunes are somewhat catchy, and they're fairly clear, and whilst they won't be making their way onto your music players, it's nevertheless inoffensive. Sadly, Deadly Arts is yet again another N64 fighting game which showed so much early promise, but ultimately failed to deliver anything truly memorable. With clunky and unresponsive controls, visuals that look dated even for the time, and gameplay which leaves you little to return to, this really is a game best left on game shelves. Borrow it from a friend for the weekend if you feel the urge to play this. But for today's topic of conversation, it's all around character design. 
With the industry having so many creative minds, why do you think that some games such as this rely so much on rehashing poor imitation characters rather than creating new and unique set of characters to brawl as? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below and until next time.